So you've just got your new X tool and you're looking to use X tool creative space. This will be a short video and tutorial on how to use creative space. This is not an in-depth tutorial, but it does show you the basics for a beginner. Creative space is a free laser engraving software available for the D1, D1 pro and the M1. This is what I personally like to use because it's free and it's got a very easy usage interface for the average laser engraver like myself. First thing we're going to look at is this left taskbar. The first item on the taskbar is images. This is how you download images to put into Xtool Creative Space. Open it and then click on your image you want to download. And that's how you get your beginning image. There's a lot of other things that you can use within Xtools. Uh, images such as insert. You can insert a line, a rectangle, or a circle here. Pretty self-explanatory. Next is shapes. There are a lot of different shapes that you can use within the Xtool Creative Space, such as gears, stars, leaves, squares and rectangles, pentagons, or triangles. There's many different shapes that you can use to make new designs or add on to the designs that you have already made. Next is text. For text, you just click on the text bar and then a text will appear. Come over here on the right and you can type in whatever text you want. You can change the size of the text. You can change the style and the font. You can change the spacing within the text and the leading before the text and align it however you want to align it. Now to look at the vector tab. Click on the vector and it makes your mouse a pin. You can then use this pin to draw lines within the grid and make a shape outline. After you're done with the outline, connect the dots and you have a new shape. You can score the shape, engrave the shape, or cut the shape however you would like. I use this a lot to go around images to cut an outline of the image. Now to look at the settings and files section. For the settings under unit, it defaults under creative space as millimeters. I have personally changed it to inches living in the United States, but if you want to leave it millimeters, go right ahead. A lot of people like it because it's a smaller form of measurement and easier to use. Next, you can come down to canvas. Auto snapping is how pictures snap to other pictures when it comes to finding the middle of the picture, the size of the picture. This is something that's used a lot in Canva or other image editing softwares. It's defaulted on, but you can turn it off if you would like. Language, I've chosen English. Log level, I have not used yet, so I've kept it on info so far. And then be sure and use a software update and check for updates uh, rather frequently and before you use the laser for the first time. Next, we're going to talk about this right sidebar. This is all used for the laser, and this is how the laser knows what to cut and what not to cut. So first, I'm going to insert a rectangle so we can use it to show how to use the power and speed and change to engrave. So power is how strong or how weak you want your laser to output energy. You can have as low as one up to 100% power. 100% is used a lot of times to cut or score things rather than just to engrave, but there's some types of metal and other objects that 100% power is needed. Speed is based on millimeters per second, even if you're in inches under your settings tab. Your speed is how fast your laser goes back and forth. 
within millimeters to second. Lines per centimeter is how many lines per centimeter, like it says, your laser can cut or engrave. I like to keep it at 100 because the lower you get, the lower quality your image is going to get. The engraving mode is either bi-directional or unidirectional. Bi-directional means that when the laser goes left to right, it cuts and goes right to left, it cuts again. If it's unidirectional, if it goes left to right, it's going to cut once and then it's going to cut again when it goes left to right. Bi-directional is a lot quicker. Next, let's look at image tools here on this top bar. First, I've made an image here of a leaf from this side panel of shapes. I can undo or redo that however I would like to fix unwanted mistakes. Next, I can put an outline outside of the image and make it as thick or as thin as I would like it. A lot of different outlines are used to cut out different images then you just hit OK after you're done to have your outline made. Next is an array. You can use this and make different columns and rows of how many different ways you want this image split up. So here, the default array is four. Circular array is the same way different X and Y grids, a 360 array, so you'll have eight different copies. And here's all the different arrays made. So I'll undo all of that. Next is a group button. If you have two different images, Scroll over both of them to hit the group. And they are grouped together. To ungroup them, do the same thing. Highlight over both images, hit ungroup. Now you can split them apart. Next is the align and arrange tool. These are not something you have to use unless you have more than one image or words. Arrange, you can bring your image to the front, bring it to the back, and figure out how you want your image aligned within other images. You can also combine the two if you have the right kind of images. Next, you can reflect the images. Reflect it vertically or horizontally figure out which way you need it. Sometimes this is really important when you have a rotary and you want to engrave to one side. Next you can position your image on the grid here. Your X is side to side and your Y axis is up and down. So you can put the image wherever you need it. Next is the size of your image. This is something I use a lot to make sure that my image is not too big or too small to fit my engraving area. So you might need a three inch height or 10 inch height, whatever is needed for your particular engraving. Next is you can rotate the image. Here I might rotate it 120 degrees or 90. Now let's talk about the power and the millimeters per second that you need for different types of objects. First let's put up an image and we're going to engrave it. Xtool gives you different material ideas on what you can engrave and the amount of power and speed it takes to engrave these different types of materials, such as a stainless steel mug. It's recommended at 100% power and 30 millimeters per second and one pass. 
Or if you're looking to engrave something on a dog tag, it's recommended at 100% power, 10 millimeters per second with just one pass. Lots of times scoring and cutting are a little bit slower uh, for different user-defined materials. But it really just takes a lot of practice. You have to figure out what works best for you. A lot of times I try to buy something where I can use a scratch piece. That way I can figure out the exact user-defined uh, spaces I need for it. The right power and the right speed. Lastly, I'll tell you how to connect your X tool to your computer. Come up to this little settings button and click it. I have mine plugged in right now so you'll see that it's under USB. If, if it was under Wi-Fi, you would need to connect your computer and your laser to your Wi-Fi network. Here under basic info, it shows your laser name, the model, which I have a D1 10 watt, the serial number, the firmware, and the Wi-Fi, and I'm not currently connected to Wi-Fi. You can come down to working parameters. And here for the positioning mode, it can either make the end of your laser a red cross or a laser spot. I like the red cross because it's easier to see where you are on your work. You can offset the cross through your X and Y axis, and that is through millimeters. I like it at the default setting. You can export elements on the canvas as a G code. For the flame alarm, I have it under low sensitivity because when I was trying to cut things with high sensitivity, the alarm would go off when there wasn't a flame anywhere in sight. I have it stopped when moved, so if I bump the table, it'll stop, and I also have the limit switch turned on. Thanks for watching this quick tutorial about Xtool Creative Space. I didn't go through everything, and there's still a lot you can learn, so just play around with it and figure out what you need to know and hopefully your laser engraving business or hobby will take off and you will really enjoy yourself. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and a follow to show your support. And if you have any ideas on how to make the video better, just leave your ideas in the comments.